Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo 100k nightfall run on Broodhold, which is this week's ordeal. It was a PlayStation exclusive strike. I don't have too much experience with this, to be fair, but I didn't think I'd have too much of a problem with it. I'm doing this on Top Tree Sentinel for Award of Dawn, the Bubble Titan, basically. Uh, I'm using Ariana's Vow, uh, Night Terror, and I'm using the Ostringer Hand Cannon with Unstoppable Rounds on it. Uh, I was going to go with the Seventh Seraph as I have Vorpal Weapon on it, but I decided to go with the Sword. And as you can see, I've got Hive Armaments, Passive Guard, Enhanced Sword Scavenger with Special Ammo Scavenger and all the usual good things. I will address later on in the video why I'm using Ariana's, because I always get asked, why are you using Ariana's? I don't have Ariana's, why are you using it? So I will address that later on. So, as you can see, you spawn in here, we're just going to... We're going to make it up to the start here, and nine times out of ten, you're going to have an ogre here. Kill the ogre, because he will kill you before you get in, and it's just time wasted. Although, as I've already said, this is quite an easy 100k. If I'm, if I, you know, it's not, I'm not saying, and I don't want people to think that is what I'm saying. I'm not saying anybody can solo this. I'm saying if you're going in to get the 100k, this is a really easy way to get it. So when you when you come in, you're going to be greeted by some ads and a champion. Now, when I say greeted, they're not going to be facing you. That the champion's going to be dropping out of a fallen catch. What I like to do is try and get him out of the way straight away, so I can see him there. I'm going to throw and try and hit him with a grenade, and then put some Arianas in him, get him to put his shield up, break his shield, and I just want to put a couple of shots on him. Now because I've got the catalyst. I'm going to store it to let it reload, so I switch to Ostringer, let it reload, and then go back after it. As you can see on the far right, back right, you've got an unstoppable ogre. So what I'm going to try and do is clear the path so I can get across there. So there's a wizard and some acolytes over here, we're going to take them out. Make your path across as straightforward as possible. Now, the reason why I'm using my primary, even though it's probably out of range, slightly out of range is because I'm trying to conserve special because I know I am going to have to use it to take some of them out but it's, it's it's no big deal you can use them so what I like to do is jump over just behind this kind of mound and there's some void snipers up top take them out and I'll just put a grenade down there see if I can get anything and I, I got put some damage but not enough to get a hit which is why you can see why I'm trying to do things from range as much as possible because their grenade bombs and their solar bombs really hurt. So we know that the, I know that the unstoppable has went up onto the bridge. So if you push round here and he sees you, he will then charge, but he won't charge to the left of this mound. He'll go round to the right. So make sure you've got your unstoppable round propped. Hit him. Don't let him hit you first. You hit him. And my piece of advice about the Unstoppables is don't don't stop them too far away. Because they're even though you've got passive guard on and you you know you can do a lot of damage with the sword, they will still do massive damage to you with a stomp. So if you've stopped them too far away, by the time you get there. You might only be able to get a couple of hits in. You want them to be as close as possible. So, mop up these ads. You are going to get the first of many waves of thrall. This is this is a feature of this. So, what I'd like to do is just let them come at me and just go, go after them with the sword. It allows me to clear them really quickly. And that's, that's that section. Now, in, in here you're going to have four elite exploders. So... What it, the way it should work is you should have two left, two on the right, and then two on the left. But sometimes, if you push down too far, one of the, these ones on the left, they will push over to the right. So just be just be wary of that. I'll just go up here and get some ammo. So when you come, once you've took those elites out, you're gonna have a bunch of thrall, which we're gonna sword, and then we're gonna do something which will allow me to speak about the Arianas, but it's something to secure to make sure you get the 100k so you can farm this champion and you'll see what I mean here we're gonna kill him two big hit two hits back away 
make sure as you back away you bring Arianna's back out. Three hits and he'll drop this worm. 4,800 points. You can see we've got 22,000 points. Time, time until detonation. You'll see that on the left hand side. Once it hits two, drop it over here. Now, the reason why we drop it is because the explosion can, it can really do some damage. And now we get another champion. I don't know how many times you, you can actually do this, but I, I set myself a target of 50,000. Rinse and repeat. So, take out the, the, the champion. Uh, and the way I do it, the first champion, I just big hit and then two little hits. Back away, switch to my Ariana straight away. Two shots to break the shield and then kill him. And then once the next one comes up, as you can see, I'm critting him from the minute he comes up. You don't want to let this champion get up and get a bead on you because those solar shots, can they can kill you. He can kill you before you can break his shield. So make sure that you're on point with your hand cannon shots. So, why am I using Ariana's again? Don't blame me, blame Bungie. I, I get asked this question nearly every week. I wish I had that gun, I wish I had that gun. Well, I think it'll go back into the loot pool. I think it, it'll be locked maybe for this season, maybe for next season. Maybe September it'll go into the loot pool, same as the Symmetry and Tommy's Matchbook. They're not going to lock them, people won't be able to get them. But the reason I use it is because I like multi-purpose weapons. And the Arianas is one of the best exotics we've had this season. This year, actually. It's obviously breaks barrier champions. It's solar. It's a hand cannon. It does massive damage. Once you learn to fire it, it's really easy to use. But what's not to like? Can you do this without Arianas? Of course you can. Unless... A quest states you need to use a certain weapon. There are other alternatives. Sidearms are good for barrier champions, although you know Ariana's is really good for this because it's solar and there's wizards and stuff. So it's not requisite to doing this. If you're soloing it, I would like to think anybody that's trying to solo hundred Ks has been playing this game all season, all year, sorry. So they'll have Ariana's. If you don't have Arianas, then I'm kind of taking it that you're you're not, you know, you're not really trying to solo this. So in a fire team, you can use sidearms, you can switch your ammo about, you can switch your weapons about. So as you can see, what we done was I took got myself to to fifty thousand, very easy. I mean that's we come in here with twenty one thousand, so that's nearly thirty thousand we got. When we get out into this section, make sure you take those two snipers out on the right. You've got a champion up to the left. You've also got some uh, some uh, some uh, drag down here that I like to clear because their their grenades can be annoying. So I'll put a couple of shots on this champion. I want to break his shield and then just keep hit, hit. Once once you know he's going to put his shield on, don't stop hitting him because by it seems to register the first crit on actually as a shield breaking hit. Now. The reason I decided to do that kind of farming that champion, because there are other champions. It's in an enclosed space. You can control the area. You're not being, you know, take, taken over by ads. And it, you've got to remember, guys, for anybody that's like, oh, that's that's cheating or it's not cheating. We are doing this on on the, the thousand power. You know, last season, we you couldn't get the 100k on most of these. So, uh, for whatever reason, that grenade broke the barrier shield, which is really cool. But I always put a grenade on there because you've got tons of thrall there. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to just gonna take some of them out. The reason why I took some of them out with the hand cannon there, as opposed to just doing it with the sword, was to let them all jump over the edge so I didn't... You know, sometimes the sword can drag you to places you don't really want to go. So, I gave them a chance... So I took a couple of acolytes over by the first champion. I'll take that wizard. Now I'm going to move over here. This room's the trickiest. It's not difficult. It's just tricky. You've got three champions. You've got a whole host of acolytes. You've got some arc knights. You're going to get waves of that. Oh, there's just so much happening here. So what I what I what I like to do is take out 
some of the acolytes and take out a couple of champions. So I take out this champion here. This is the first champion I always take. Every time you take a champion down, you're going to get a wave of throw. You'll get some curse throw and a whole host of normal throw. So I always back away to this area. It just gives me a line of sight and I'm really not going to be dealing with incoming shots. And because I've because I've dealt with the acolytes over on the right hand side, the majority of them, I'm not going to be dealing with incoming solar bombs. Also what you'll get is you'll always get one of these guys. You'll always get an arc shielded knight here. So we've took him out. This still adds up by the other champion. I'll put this in here. Now, there, there's a champion where I'm standing, which we've, we've killed. Now, there's a champion up top, and there's a champion inside here. This this part, in, the inside part, that's kind of... It's, it's not really difficult, like anything else here. It depends on how you attack it. So, we're just making sure we're good. I'm looking for this other wizard. I want a good line of sight on the other wizard. We'll just grab some ammo. And there, there's the second wizard. So, there's three wizards up top. Took the first one when we first came into the room. There's that one there, and then there's one further back to the left of where that one was. So because we're going to be attacking that area, I kind of, as you see, probably passive guard saved me quite a bit there. But I just didn't want constant solar fire coming out of that cave entrance. So now what we're going to do is just make our way around here, taking out some of these acolytes. And then we're going to push up this left-hand side. Try and get cover. The barrier champion is just where we looked up there to the right. But there is a wizard just around the corner. So we'll take out any kind of acolytes that are around here. There's the wizard. Try and hit your crits because it means you're not exposing yourself for too long. And now we're going to go after the barrier. So there's the barrier champion. So we'll put a couple of shots on the barrier. And then we'll go straight up with the sword. There we go, and now we'll, we know that, we, because we've took that that uh, champion out, we know we're going to get a wave of Thrall and Acolytes, uh, Thrall and Exploders. So, what I've done is I'm pushing back round to the same sort of, it, I always go to the f same place the very first time, but once I've cleared the area of Acolytes, I can go wherever I want now. So we just want to make sure there's no other ads floating about before we go after this arc shielded knight who will always be there once you've once you kill a champion, he will always appear. So that's him finished. Now we'll go and get the worm. And we're left with the ads inside that little cave area. Now there's some accolades. There was three, but we killed one. So there is two arc shielded knights in there and a champion. What I'm going to try and do is take out the Acolytes first so that I can attack the champion with Arianas. And then once I've killed the champion, then we'll go after the the, the Arc Shielded Knights. So we'll just try to get a bead on where the, the Acolytes are. That's what we want. We want to know where the Acolytes are. The Acolytes are going to be the problem here. Once you take the Acolytes out, then as you can see, I was on the right, but they, you've got to go from left to right. This is a better place to get an angle on the champion. So we'll just break his shield. Now it's the same as the champ the, the barrier champion that we took out. Just keep hitting them when you you know my Arianas has run out. I what I'm finding this season, especially with the hive, is the champions don't re their, their regeneration isn't as aggressive as it maybe was last season. So now we've got that other wave. We've killed up we've killed our uh, We've killed our champion, so we've got another wave of, of Thrall and Cursed Thrall. Now this, which was worked really well for us, that the champion grew a pair and come after us, the Arc Shielded Knight. He was deluded in doing that, but it, it definitely helped us. We didn't have to put ourselves in harm's way. Now what we're going to do is go after these two Arc Shielded Knights. As I say, make sure that you doing stuff in order. Just It, it kind of helps you get a, a grasp of where you are within the strike as well what ads you're, you're dealing with, you know, what's still left to take out. So routine, repeatable strategy. So the repeatable strategy is here is straight off the back, clear out in this big section, clear the acolytes and the wizards. I go for the champion first 
try and get him. Once I've took the acolytes around him, I go for him. I'll take a wizard down as well. Then take the wizards and the rest of the acolytes down. Then take the champion down in here. And then take out the acolytes, the champion, then the arc shielded knights in the cave. In between those two sections, you're going to get a wave of th uh, thrall, some four cursed and the rest are normal, and an arc shielded knight. Then you're going to get uh, the brood queen. What you'll notice that I was doing there was I was using that pillar to block her attack. Now I could still see her to the to the right of that pillar because she's her attack comes from her right. So if I make sure that the pillar is covering her attack, I can still see her head, but I'm blocking her attack. So now we're making it to this next section. We're going to be greeted. We are going to be greeted by an unstoppable. He's not going to be looking at us. He'll be have his back to us, but the minute we start to attack him, you guessed it, another wave of throw. This time, though, we're going to have elite throw. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try and clear some of these out. Now, void damage and elemental damage is going to hurt here. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop him, as I said, because I'm not going after him with a sword. We're going to stop him a lot farther away than I, than I normally would. And then we're going to back away. Get where unstoppable shot procced. Got him. And then he's dead. Now we can take out the rest of the throw. Without having an unstoppable giant killers. But you'll see there. There's also two shriekers in this room. So we'll take the first shrieker from up here. The second shrieker is quite quite a bit further away. So we're not going to push. We're just going to take more throw. Yep, you guessed it. Uh, and now we'll take some of these exploders. It might not surprise you guys for, to hear that this isn't the last wave of thrall we're going to have to deal with. In fact, this isn't even the last wave of thrall we're going to have to deal with in here. So, once we take out the next Shrieker, and I'm pretty sure, though I never really paid a lot of attention to that, if I'm being honest, I just knew maybe it's when I take the champion down. I don't think so. I think it... I think it's linked to the Shriekers. When you take the Shrieker down, you get the Wave of Thrall. I could be wrong. Oh, I am wrong, because there they are. There's more Thrall. That was a that was a really good grenade, because I, I was expecting them. So now I'm just making sure that there's there's no there's no more Exploders, because now we've got the Shrieker. Really easy to take that kind of stuff down. Now what you're left with, because the Wanted Champion's gone, now you can see we're getting... Another wave of thrall. I don't know what to say. There's more thrall. There's more thrall in this strike than there is on the, on, on, on the moon. It's crazy. So I'm just kind of... Now I have a bit of a... Bit of a fun time here because... I actually want to take down these exploders. And... Uh, I couldn't get a free shot on them. What I would suggest is to back away the minute you see them coming and, and, and handpick the Exploders. Because the, the normal ones, they're not much of a problem. So now what we're going to do, now that we've took out the 4 million Thrall that are in the straight, we're going to go after this Arc Shielded Knight on, that's on this side, and then we'll go after the Champion. Now, as you can see, I'm using the sword as as part of my mobility. I'm just going down here to get some some uh, ammo. And now I'm going to go up here. I'm going to use this rock right here, this kind of hive thing. Hive gestation pods, I think they are, something like that. And I'll, I'll, as soon as I break his shield, I'll go after him with the sword. Now there's... Kind of one more champion, I think, that we've got to deal with. And that's on the bridge section. Now, a lot of you guys might might remember this section because this was the the part of the last word quest that a lot of people had problems with. This is the second wizard. Now, the wizard kind of has... This is her uh, familiar, if you like. It's not really a familiar. It's like she splits in two and uh, it's like her shade. 
for D1 vets, you'll remember the shade of Oryx that he used to send out his projection. Well, this wizard kind of splits in two. You've got a solar section, a solar wizard, and a, and a void version. Now we've got an unstoppable and another wave of throw. <laughs> it's, it's almost like a bad joke. I, I don't know what this should be called, but it definitely should be called something to do with throw. So I've backed away. I'm backing away. Because I know I've got exploders. So I'll, if, if it gets too hairy, I'll get my sword out and just clear some of them. But I can use the sword to get me out of there. Now the great thing about the thrall is they'll never try and lead you. They'll never try and jump to where they think you're going to go. They will always follow you. So you can just lead them around and they'll just follow you around in a nice little circle. And... Because normally what I would have done if there had been that many thrall, I'd have got my sword out and cleared them. But because there was an exploder and I just couldn't get a decent bead on the exploders. So that is what, that, that's, that's those ads. Now we've got this unstoppable. Uh, because he's halfway down the bridge, you cannot run down there. You can't stop him and run down with the sword. Because by the time you get down there, he'll, have, he'll be out of his kind of... Uh, damage phase and he'll just two slam you and you'll be dead but we didn't need to do it 114,000 now we're at the boss now the boss kind of works there'll be a champion you'll kill the, the ads and the champion you'll put the little worm in, into its place put a grenade up there and try and clear some of these uh you'll put the worm into its place and then what we're going to do is the first wizard's going to come and i'm just going to put down a bubble and we're just going to go at the first wizard and then we're going to go at the second wizard and try and get them as low as possible. We're probably not going to kill both the wizards doing this, but you are going to leave yourself in a much better position. So there's the champion. So we'll just hit the champion a few times. There is the little worm. And we'll go and put this worm in here. And then we're going to back away until the wizard's out and can take damage. Then we're going to go and put the bubble down and just go after her with the sword. Now... You're going to get the solar wizard, then she's going to switch to the void wizard, and then you're going to get both of them there. I think there's a triumph for killing both of these within a couple of seconds of each other. I already had the triumph, I think, so bubble down, and now we go after her. Weapons of light, just make sure that you keep refreshing your weapons of light, because she will move out of the bubble. So as you can see, because we've got passive guard as well, it's no problem. So she's changed, and you see we're still doing big damage. Go and get my weapons of light back. And it also, it's a great time to move out, out of there when she when she puts down her void attack. You don't really want to chance your hand with that void attack. See, the it's, 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 it's cheap damage. Now we'll move away. Once she goes immune, we move away. Because she's going she's gonna to change. I was a little bit... Over enthusiastic with the grenade. I should have left it just a little bit longer, but as you can see, we've still done some damage. Now we're going to Ariana from distance. Now it's a different ball game. The first one was just put the bubble down and just do damage. Now we want to get rid of one of these wizards. As you can see, we've got rid of one. Now my suggestion, I went over here, but there's, there's too many ads over here. So we'll take out one of these Arc Knights. And now I'm going to just, I'm doing like a lap and keeping myself clear of all the ads. You, there is no real place you can just stand and do damage. As you can see, I take a fair bit of damage here. I'm going to put some shots on her, but more so I want to clear these guys. I want to clear as many of the acolytes as possible. We'll just move to a different position. I'm always using these hive structures as cover. And make sure, while you're doing this, make sure you keep enough ammunition to be able to damage the boss. Because this is what we're going to use to kill the boss. Again, why I use Ariana's. It's such a great multi-purpose weapon. Now we're going to go back to our original spot over at the back here. We're just looking for a decent, as you can see, it's a decent view on her. And I'm going to put as many shots as I can. But this is, this is your safe point over here. This is your point, of, this is your base of operations. Because if she hits you with there, you've got the, the other side. You know, it's a real, and, and, and none of the ads, 
once you take down the acolytes, as you can see, they're still an acolyte throwing bombs at us. But once you take down the acolytes, you're safe here from everything but her attack. And her attack, you can get away from quite easily, as you can see here. So, just try to get a, a decent look at her. We'll move up. Keep a, keep, keep a, a, a structure between us and the knight. And that is the run. Not very... Quite straightforward. I wouldn't say not difficult, but quite straightforward. Uh, thank you very much for watching the run, guys. I hope you appreciated it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope this helps you guys get your 100Ks done. Again, thanks a lot for watching. If you did enjoy it, a like rating would be always appreciated. Take it easy, guys. And I will see you in the next video.